Hey Desmond Duyu, today we're gonna learn how to make this binary raincoat just like the one from The Matrix. So let's begin. In After Effects, let's hit Command N to create a new composition. I'm gonna make it 24 frames per second and click, let's make it 5 seconds long, so 500, and click OK. Uh, I'm gonna go to my Type tool over here and I'm gonna click and drag and just create a text box that spans a whole composition width and height, so somewhere around there. And we don't have to type anything in. Let's rename this uh, text layer to uh, M for, I guess, matrix, and open up the source text. So we're going to add an expression into the source text. And before we do that, let's add in our slider controls. Let's go to Effect, Expression Control, and I'm going to drop in a slider control. And I'm going to duplicate it two times, Command D. And then I'm going to name the first one C. So we're going to randomize the binary. So we need a C slider. And we also need a uh, velocity, it's called val, for the speed of the, of the, of the rain uh, draining down. And the last one will be the number of times it's going to repeat, uh, how many binary uh, numbers are we going to repeat. So now that we have all our tree sliders, we can write our expression. So let's go into our source text. Before that, let me just change the size of my uh, font, font size. For my expression editor so you guys everyone can see clearly let's go to option let's hold our option and click on the stopwatch and we're going to create our variable c is equals to pick whip to our slider semicolon and then we're going to do the same thing and pick whip and then the slider value and then we're going to create two variable we're going to write in uh, m when, which is the the whole string of text of binary and equals to b, which is the binary itself, which is the randomized 0, 1, I'll explain more later, and b is currently equals to nothing, all right, semicolon, and we're gonna write a for loop statement, for i is equals to zero, right, and then semicolon, i is less than n, number of times it's gonna repeat, and i is gonna increment, and then we're gonna open, write our statement within a curly brackets, and we're gonna write, uh, b is equals to let's see we want to be random a random number between uh we want to have a to randomize the number from between zero and one we need to use a random function and we need to round it up so we're going to do math dot round so this will make it either zero or one and then we're going to add the the, the random value into our container string i mean our, our m variable so m plus equals to b semicolon and see what happened we also need to change our slider value of n and you can see we're generating random values already at the top so we gotta reposition it okay so but here's the thing when i screw up true you know if i play this thing uh, i'm getting uh, random binary i mean i'm getting random numbers uh, at every single frame so we gotta remember to add in seed random uh, inside the for loop you can actually do it outside uh, but if I just it's up to you so I'm gonna put in the C plus the increment value and put it true all right so if now if I would scrub true nothing would happen all right and if I scrub the C see I can get a randomized a random binary uh, for the seed value and then I can also increase, so let's increase the slider for n to 1200. And then, um, so we could, there's a threshold for the size of the binary. So if I were to increase the size of a slider all the way to, to about 2000, it suddenly disappear. I think the, the string is too long. So uh, just keep note of that. We're gonna do 1200 for now. Oops, 1,200. And then uh, we're gonna select uh, our vertical type tool, right? So you can click and hold on, on the type tool to get the vertical type tool. And we're gonna right click on our text layer and we can convert it into a vertical text layer. All right, so everything is just like a rain. Uh, I'm gonna reposition it to be in the middle. And then I'm gonna try and complete this over here by typing in yes so a thousand and zero four so play around with the font size uh, and try to 
or see what's the optimum size sizing okay so we have our random binary okay so uh so part one is done now i want to randomize the opacity just to give it more uh, make it look like it's, it's so everything doesn't look so flat so i'm going to go to my text animator and add in uh, opacity and then let me close this source text here i'm going to rename this animator to opacity i'm going to turn off the opacity to zero percent open up my range selector in advance open up my ran, uh, randomize order right and i'm going to change the shape profile to a triangle so this will give it uh each each character a different uh, opacity and i can play with the ease high and low to kind of get the type of look that i want and uh, so ease high will kind of make like uh, opacity lower and those who who has high opacity to be more obvious um so another thing you can play around and uh, i'm going to option click on this random seed while i'm over here and just put it into my slider value over here and then so when i scrub through my c value i'm also randomizing opacity okay and now i'm going to command d to opacity and i'm going to open it up delete opacity this is now we're going to create the, the text animator for the drift for each uh, line of code so i'm going to change it rename it to pause open up the range selector and actually we don't have to do that we just need to add in property and then we're going to add in position okay so if I were to do change the Y axis, you can see like all characters moving down. We're gonna change uh, in the advanced option, let's change it to line. Okay, so everything's staggered. So we can animate, we can actually keyframe this position uh, so to kind of make it rain down. Uh, but so instead of doing that, we're gonna write an expression as usual. So we're gonna write in Y is equals to time times, and then we're gonna pick width to our slider control over here semicolon and then we're going to do value plus an array square bracket zero comma y okay so if i were to crank this uh, i remember to set the position uh, value back to zero all right so it would just drift perpetually without me having to keyframe anything and uh we can actually offset our line of code in uh, the z-axis if you go to the text animator add property enable per, per character 3d and then this will make every character 3d right and then so if we were to just change now we have a z value over here we can change it to about 300 and we can go into our custom view one so this will yes so i'm going to put it about 2000 so you guys can see it in action see it's actually backing up in the z-axis and let's go back to our front camera active camera and switch it back so let's switch it back to zero instead of always opening up our text animator and uh changing a value manually right let's actually create another slider control select our text layer go to effect i'm going to expression control i'm going to drop a 3d point control and then i'm going to in Instead of this value, I'm going to pick whip it to this 3D point over here. And I'm going to set this uh, 3D value into zero. So now instead of, oh, uh, I have all my controls at the top, uh, at the top layer in my effects control. So it makes things really convenient for me. I can change the C, change the number of binary, uh, the velocity and, uh, how it's offset. So it's really convenient. So I'm going to, change uh my z control 3d point control i'm gonna name it to about three uh give it a z of 300 maybe i'll just uh, rename this to pause for position okay so uh we're almost done let's play this back let's see so i'm running i'm actually recording this tutorial on a macbook pro it's not the fastest uh so bear with me guys so i used to record my tutorial uh in my office because uh, that's where my workstation is but because of the social distancing i don't have my workstation so it's playing real slow but you get the point it's drifting at different speed and then what we want to do next is actually duplicate this uh this text layer all right and we're going to open up p 
and hold shift and press T to kind of add the opacity property to show up. We're going to reduce the opacity to about 50% and we're going to push it back uh, the Z axis by 750 pixels. Okay, so we're just going to create some uh, some density to it. We're gonna I'm gonna screw up the seed value. All right, so to change it up from uh, so to make it different, make the second layer different, and do the same thing. Command D to duplicate my second text layer, and I'm gonna change the seed value. Press P and hold Shift T, and I'm gonna reduce opacity to 25, and I'm gonna push it back to 1,500. Um, you can always change the values. Uh, find what works best for you. And then I'm going to go create a new camera. And then I'm going to select a OneNote camera and uh, enable depth of view. I guess I focus this in about 716, aperture 50, blur 150. Click OK. I'm going to turn off the back two layers so we can see uh, clearly how depth of view is working. And but first of all, everything looks very far apart. Let me just zoom in to. So let's change my camera to about negative, negative 600 maybe. Or maybe ne negative 700. Yeah, that's not bad. So uh, let's see, let's open up our camera and maybe you can change the setting. So right now it's like everything's kind of too blurry. So maybe I can reduce the aperture. I can reduce the aperture and I can reduce, uh, I believe I can increase the focal distance. It's not changing. Yes, there we go. About 800 and maybe just to blur it up, let's increase the aperture. And that's good. That's good. So 800 and then uh, about 90 for aperture. Click OK and we can turn on our other two layer. So this is going to take a while. And uh, another thing we can do to enhance uh, this shot over here, we can create adjustment layer. And of course, we can add a glow. So let's rename this adjustment layer to glow. I'm going to effect, stylize, glow. And then uh, I'm going to reduce the threshold to 30%, uh, radius to maybe about 35, and the glow intensity to 0.2. So I already experimented uh, beforehand, so I know the magic numbers. So another thing we want to do is like, maybe the green, the, the binary at the front is not very clear. Actually, let's also scrub, change the slide value. Let's change the seed value for the first one, because I don't like what the, the whatever this is going on. Uh, so you can see the green at the back may be clashing with the one at the front. So what we can do is that, what we can do is we select our our back uh, binary. We're gonna drop in a color correction effect. We're gonna go into hue and saturation and just reduce the saturation about negative 50. All right, I'm gonna Command C to copy this hue and saturation and drop it onto the back uh, binary text layer. Okay, so that's all good. And uh, we're done, let's play it. And there you go, this is how you create a binary rain code just by using uh, simple text layers and uh, text animators and some expressions. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. See you next time.